Okay, we are alive, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be taking a look at Bitcoin. We're gonna be taking a look at Ethereum, because it's not that far behind. I'm gonna go over some conjecture around Link and this ecosystem as a whole, as I make kind of a general analysis that will hopefully get us forward through the week. Now, stick around to the end of the episode, because we're gonna go over some more, I guess, uh, amb ambiguation over some of the stuff we're doing with the Arcane Bear private family. But anyways, don't worry about that. We'll dive right into the charts, bam. Okay, so up on the screen here, you should be able to see Ethereum on the 15 minute. And you can actually see that we're peaking at around $423 in Ethereum right now. Now, more importantly is the Bitcoin story. This is always where we start, so I wanna make sure I go back there. Now, for the last two months, we've been talking about this SOS period. Um, our initial assertions is around 15,900, this line here, which is the one, um, it's the first top of the regression line after uh, the spring. So we saw something very similar into Ethereum. Now, on the daily here, there's a few things I wanna point out. Number one, um, we're staying clear above the moving averages on the nine we broke out there. And right now we have a little bit of uh, divergence here on the daily, which is um, not too bad. Obviously, you can see here, we had from this point to this point divergence, but here we're actually staying pretty flat. So it's not blazingly obvious divergence. Um, when you go into the four hour, you can see we did shoot up here, but you have this point drawn to this point, quite flat for this point to this point. So we do see divergence. Um, they're likely gonna get that cool off right near the top of this regression line around 16,900. This is where I think the SOS will effectively turn around and create the backup phase for reaccumulation. Now, the fun part here is really gonna see what type of accumulation range we build here. Do we build an accumulation range that's pretty stable between say 16,000 and 13,900? Or do we build uh, another kind of rising gradient bottom um, uh, exchange here as well, where we see even more power and we move up into the $20,000 area? So those are the next stages I'm really looking forward to on Bitcoin is, is that backup phase. Um, now that we're getting near the top, of the regression line, um, I'm going to be moving my leverage long positions out. Um, and I've actually been leaning into Ethereum the last few days. So I'll take a look at Ethereum. Um, Ethereum was in its backup phase. Now, we had already completed the SOS on Ethereum. So let's go over Ethereum here. Um, as you can see on the daily, if I clean this chart up here a little bit, we've actually been hovering around the 1618 for the extension of our entire trading range. Um, so we had our SOS, we went to the top part of the uh, very part, second part of the regression line, very similar to what I think we're about to do in Bitcoin around 16,000. And then we dropped back down and formed this kind of rather we weaker trading range here. Now we hit the first SOS and LPS. Remember, these things are always, so you have a, a, like an SOS and LPS, an SOS and LPS, an SOS and LPS effectively. You get a few of these. So even on the smaller time frames, on the four hour, um, I want to apologize for the sound. It's been raining here. We've been having kind of a hurricane. There's lots of places around me that are flooded. I'm quite high up in the mountains, so I don't have that particular thing happening here, but um, excuse the sound of the rain in the background. I'm sure you like it, right? Anyways, um, so on the four hour, we saw this primary SOS come outside of the smaller trading range and then our first LPS. Now I built up most of my position for Ethereum here at around 380 to 390. Um, I am in a long position now for Ethereum for the long haul, pretty close to the duration of this. I will likely lean into the leverage long here as time develops. This finalization of the SOS phase is extremely important. Um, and as we start to have 
further uh, moves outside, whatever it might be, upwards of around $550 before uh, probably a noticeable retracement back to like 420 or something like this before a bigger um, final um, SOS and LPS that, that could bring us as high as eight, $900, uh, something effectively like this. Um, so again, what I want to point out is that I, I think the real SOS, the real fun of this stuff starts near uh, March, January of 2021. That's where the real bull market cycle begins. Um, for Ethereum here, very forward kind of outlooking process for Bitcoin as well, is that I think we're going to have this SOS as high as 16,000, 17,000. We're gonna come back down to test maybe the 21 week moving average on Bitcoin. Now this is another one I wanted to really point out and go over again. Uh, so let's go back to, to Bitcoin on the daily. One of the things that I had pointed out multiple times, uh, sorry, on the weekly, uh, in our previous videos, as early as 2019, at this first run up to $13,000, one of the reasons why I said I was not buying into this as uh, the movement of the bull cycle starting was the lack of the touch of this 21 moving average. This signaled to me that it was overhyped and overreactive, and that's exactly what it was. It was an automatic rally. We were here, even though it's not clearly as clearly visible as if you were to use a candle, I'm sure, because of the wicks, you can see we actually had a very consistent retest of the 21 moving average multiple times leaving out of 2016, 2017, uh, something like this year. Now you had like one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five, six. So you had multiple areas where the 21 week moving average was a consistent place of a retest. So if we were to use that same type of outward facing assumption, um, what we could see is something like this. Here we go out, we have our peak maybe as high as $17,700 uh, for the SOS. I don't see why not. Uh, and then we get to see what type of accumulation range we have. Now, by that time, the 21 week moving average should be somewhere between $12,000 to $13,500. And I suspect it will make a trading range in this area. This is where I'll be making my final accumulations for my long positions in Bitcoin as well for the duration of the year. Uh, so it's no slow process, it takes time. So again, we've been watching, calling for this SOS and boom, here it is, great. Everything after this is long-term plays for the duration of the bull market effectively. Now, lastly, I want to look at Link um, on the daily. Uh, we've been watching this rising gradient bottom of an accumulation channel. Um, I do suspect what we're witnessing is, let's draw it like this. I'll move the moving averages out of the way here. Um, we'll go something. We'll draw the green line here. See this gray, this, this is where the trading range actually is. See, we actually had a breakout, an SOS, and the backup phase into the top part of this trading range already. Now, the reason I've drawn it upwards like this is because I wanted to highlight the, the rising gradient bottom, but you're still always moving through a horizontal trading range when you're looking at something that's, say, that we call inside the box. So this was the SOS, and this was the backup phase. We called for around 10.7 in the private newsletter. We hit around 10.5, 10.4, a little bit on the undercarriage of that one. Um, so this play all in all is worth Worked out. Um, I did start to accumulate part of my chain link position for the. This one I'm not as long term bullish about. I do believe we're in the final stages of the bull market of chain link. So will it go quite a bit higher? Seems likely. How much higher? Uh, it's kind of less relevant, I think, to the long term story as how high something like Bitcoin could go because it is our, our inner, our, basically our money system. So lastly, I'm going to leave it out with the VIX. We have declined almost totally from the height of all that nonsense, dropped 31% on the four, uh, over the last 14 days since this election cycle started. We have come back down to our support range for the VIX. And just as importantly, when we look at the S&P 500, we are nearing on the daily the top of the trading range, making this look like this is actually a reaccumulation pattern signaling what's going to become a new bull market after all of this nonsense. So ladies and gentlemen, it is not just a bull market in blockchain and Bitcoin. It is going to probably permeate through the entire sector as every country has no choice but to print money because human intellectual capital and life is way more valuable than money ever could imagine itself to be. So Bitcoin gets to be one of the lucky beneficiaries of the fact that that ecosystem is just going to print 
finance and print and currently debase the uh, currency system effectively over and over again, driving uh, what, what little capital there is left into hopefully wherever it might find itself. Um, so I think we're in for quite a fun ride here. Uh, again, you know, none of this is investment advice. Do your own homework. Join the private bear den. Um, we're going to be sending out, for those of you that are wondering where the private newsletter is, we're a few days late because I accidentally deleted it. <laughs> so just wait. It'll come out this Monday, um, a few days behind. And we've got a few more intermediary updates. As I can see right now, Bitcoin's at $15,825 on its way to that maybe $16,000, $17,000 SOS phase that we were looking for as well. So Steve with the Arcane Bear, we're signing off. We'll see you guys again in the next episode. Um, 